mind the seed, which is sunk in a kind of sleep, after which it will develop into sun man. Man now passes through his second stage of consciousness on the sun. It resembles that into which today man sinks during a calm and dreamless sleep. This condition, which interrupts man's state of wakefulness today, is a remainder, as it were, a memory of the time of the sun development. One can also compare it with that dull state of consciousness in which the world of plants exists today. As a matter of fact, in the plant one must see a sleeping being. In order to understand the development of mankind, one must realize that in this second great cycle the sun was still a planet, and that only later did it advance to the existence of a fixed star. In the sense of mystery science, a fixed star is one which sends life forces to one or several planets situated at a distance from it. During the second cycle this was not yet the case with the sun. At that time it was still united with the beings to which it gave force. These beings, and also man at his level of development at that time, still lived on it. A planetary Earth, separated from Sun and Moon, did not exist. Everything in the way of substances, forces, and beings which exists on and in the Earth today, and everything which now belongs to the Moon, was still within the Sun. It formed a part of its substances, forces, and beings. Only during the next third great cycle did that detach itself from the sun which in mystery science is called the moon. This is not the present moon, but the predecessor of our earth, its previous embodiment reincarnation as it were. This moon became the earth, after it in turn had detached from its substance and cast off what one today designates as moon. In the third cycle two bodies thus existed in place of the former planetary sun, namely, the fixed star sun and the split-off planetary moon. Man and the other beings which had developed as man's companions during the course of the sun, had been taken out of the sun along with the moon. The sun now provided the moon beings from the outside with those forces which they had previously obtained directly from it as their dwelling place. After the third moon cycle there occurred another period of rest for Laia. During this period the two separate bodies, sun and moon, became united and together passed through the condition of the sleeping sea. In the fourth cycle period, Sun and planetary moon at first emerged from the obscurity of sleep as one body. During the first half of this cycle our Earth, along with man and his companions, split off from the Sun. A little later it cast off the present moon, so there now exist three members as descendants of the former Sun planet. On the Sun Planet, man and the other beings mentioned in the course of the discussion of Saturn passed through another stage of their development in the Second Great Cosmic Era. The rudiment of the later physical body of man, which had gradually developed on Saturn, emerges like a plant from the seed at the beginning of the Sun Cycle. But here it does not remain in the same state in which it was previously. It is permeated by a second, more delicate, but in itself more powerful body, the ether body. While the Saturn body of man was a kind of automaton, quite lifeless now, through the ether body which gradually permeates it completely, it becomes an animated being. Man thereby becomes a kind of plant. His appearance, however, is not that of the plants of today.
rather in his form he already somewhat resembles present-day man. But, the rudiment of the head like the plant root of today, is turned downward, toward the center of the sun, and the rudiments of the feet turned upward like the blossom of the plant. This plant man organism has as yet no capacity of voluntary movement. Asterisk. But man only develops into this form during the second of the seven smaller cycles rounds through which the sun passes. For the duration of the first of these small cycles there is as yet no ether body in the human organism. Everything which occurred during the Saturn era is then repeated in brief. The physical body of man still retains its automatic character, but it changes its previous form somewhat. If it were to remain as it was on Saturn, it would not be capable of harboring an ether body. It is changed in such a way that it can become a carrier of this body. During the following six cycles the ether body is developed further and further, and through its forces, which act on the physical body, the latter also gradually receives a more and more perfect form. The work of transformation which is performed on man here is carried out by the spirits which have already been mentioned in connection with man in our discussion of the Saturn development. Those spirits which are called, radiating lives, or, flames, in Christian esoteric science, thrones, are now no longer in question. They have performed their labor in this respect during the first half of the first Saturn cycle. What can be observed during the first Sun cycle round is the labor of the spirits of wisdom, dominions or pirates in Christian esoteric doctrine. They have intervened in the development of man around the middle of the first Saturn cycle see the previous chapter. They now continue their labor during the first half of the first sun cycle by repeating in successive stages the wise arrangement of the physical body. A little later this labor is joined by that of the spirits of motion, dynamis in Christianity, Mahat in theosophical literature, thereby that